Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben and I have a vocabulary video for you today. It's been a while since I last made a vocabulary video and I think you'll find this one particularly useful because we're going to be looking at 10 adjectives to describe people. Now I'm going to give the definitions and examples for each one of these adjectives but I really encourage you to think of your own examples because that's how you're really going to remember these words um, and try to give them some kind of emotional connection. Now with adjectives to describe people, that's quite easy because you can think of real people in your life, so friends, family, teachers, or, or classmates or colleagues who display these characteristics or maybe even yourself. Maybe you've noticed that you've been this way uh, in some situations um, and that will just help you to, to remember these words in the future when, when you need them. Okay, so let's go straight on to number one, which is fickle, fickle. Now somebody who is fickle tends to change their opinion very easily and quite suddenly usually. So you all probably know somebody in your life who is fickle, but a typical example that I'm going to give is football fans. So football fans can be very fickle. They worship a player one day and then lambast him the next. So football fans can be very fickle. They worship a player one day and lambast him the next. So worship, you can, you know, adore. Uh, but lambast is the opposite. They heavily criticize him. So it's unfairly, perhaps. So it's very typical. Football fans are generally very fickle. And the second adjective I have for you today is gullible. Gullible. A gullible person is easily tricked. Uh, they tend to believe everything they are told, everything they hear. So a good example and a true example uh, is my sister. My sister is so gullible. She always believes the April Fool's pranks. So for those of you who don't know, April Fool's Day is the 1st of April in Britain every year. And it's when people play tricks on each other or tell each other things that are not true. It's the only day where, where you can do that and not get in trouble. Even the newspapers often pr um, publish stories which are, are not true. Uh, but yeah, my sister is very gullible. She always believes those pranks. We call, we call those little tricks or lies pranks. And the third adjective I had for you today is cantankerous. Cantankerous. It's quite a difficult word to say, but it's quite nice if you get it right. Uh, and a, a, a cantankerous person is usually somebody who is quite difficult to deal with. Uh, they can be very argumentative and they complain a lot. We actually use cantankerous usually to describe older people. I think it's because as we get older we tend to become more difficult, we complain more. I think I'm definitely going in, in that direction. I'm becoming more and more cantankerous um, as I get older. So an example is my granddad was always very moody and sometimes downright cantankerous cantankerous. So yeah, my granddad was always uh, argumentative and difficult to deal with. Now there's another word in that sentence you may like and my members of the exam academy, my exam academy will know this word because I taught it recently as downright. Now downright is really a word we just use to emphasize the, the following word. So it means sort of utter or complete. So downright Cantankerous is like utterly cantankerous, completely tank cantankerous, so it's really for emphasis. By the way, if you want to join my exam academy for the people who are preparing for the Cambridge English exams, the link to the Patreon page is in the description. But the fourth adjective today, plucky. Plucky. Uh, a plucky person is quite brave, courageous and spirited. And the example is the plucky boy climbed the tree even though he was afraid of heights. So the plucky boy climbed the tree even though he was afraid of heights. So you, know, you have to be brave and courageous to be able to do that. Um, like cantankerous is used for older people usually, plucky is often used for, for younger people or at least the sort of weaker person in a, in a situation. So you could have a plucky football team or a plucky uh, boxer who is perhaps the underdog is expected to lose, but they're very brave and correct, courageous. Maybe they don't have the technical abilities, but they, they, they really fight. Uh, they're very plucky. Okay, number five is quirky. Quirky. This is quite a common adjective, and it kind of means weird, but in a different and fun way. So it's quite a positive adjective, usually, to be quirky. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Um, so my example is she was well known for her quirky dress sense. So she was well known for her quirky dress sense. Uh, so she dr dressed in a different way. She was different to other people, and, but in a good way. She was, um, it was nice, you know, her dress sense was good, it's positive, but a little bit weird and different. You can have a quirky sense of humour. Uh, you could even describe um, a house as quirky or the decorations of the house as quirky. Weird and different, but in a nice, positive way. And my next adjective today, adjective number six, is uncouth. Uncouth. Now this basically means lacking class or grace. Okay, so perhaps to really understand this you need an example. He dressed elegantly, but his uncouth table manners gave him away. So he dressed elegantly, so he looked smart, but his uncouth table manners gave him away. So he didn't have the class or the grace necessary in the situation. So perhaps he used the wrong fork or, or in the wrong order, or maybe he started eating before everyone else. Just, you know, there's certain, there's certain etiquette at the table in, in very formal, um, sophisticated situations. And if you're uncouth, if you lack the class or, or grace, you, you don't know what you're supposed to do. So it's, it's a negative word, obviously, to be uncouth. And number seven is unflappable. Unflappable. I like this word. And an unflappable person is calm under pressure. So they don't get too anxious or, or, or nervous. They just stay calm under pressure. You think flap is what birds do with their wings. They flap their wings or, or even insects. So flapping their wings, you can imagine this very quick, quick movement of flapping. But if you don't flap, you just glide in a calm, serene way. You don't need all that flapping. So if you're unflappable, you're not, not bothered. You're not perturbed by the situation. You just maintain your calm. So an example sentence, whatever crisis we face at work, my boss is always unflappable. So whatever crisis we face at work, my boss is always unflappable. So he never gets nervous, never gets stressed. It's always calm under pressure. And the next adjective is aloof, aloof. Aloof means distant. Um, to be distant, not physically distant, but sort of emotionally distant, not getting too close to people, but in quite a cool way. So the example sentence, the cool kids at school were always so aloof, it drove me crazy. So the cool kids, you know, they were standing in the, in the playground, not really getting involved with the others, just, just looking very cool, distant, um, aloof. And the next one is definitely negative. <laughs> it's verbose, verbose. Uh, now, somebody who is verbose uses too many words. So it could be a person, obviously in this video we're looking at adjectives to describe people, but it could also be um, a piece of text, for example, a, a verbose essay. It uses too many words in that, you know, it's using a lot of uh, pretentious words, perhaps. It's overly wordy. So for a person, a, a verbose person just talks a lot, but using a lot of words. So the example, he is such a bore at parties. He's always so verbose. So he's such a bore. A bore is a boring person, and the noun from boring is bore, to be a bore. He's such a bore at parties. He's always so verbose. Verbose, he's using lots of, lots of words, lots of impressive words, speaking too much, too long. And the last one, number 10, the last adjective for today is hapless. Hapless. Uh, now, hap exists as a word, but it's not very common. Uh, it's all, almost disappeared from the English language, but hapless exists. It continues to exist and it's quite common. Um, and what it means is basically unlucky. A hapless person is an uh, unlucky person. It's a synonym for unlucky. So it's always impressive if you can use more advanced or proficiency level synonyms for a, a more basic word, especially for the exams if you're taking one. Uh, but the example for hapless is the hapless defender scored three own goals in one match. So the hapless defender scored three own goals in one match. So we're referring to football, a football a defender for a football team, and he or she scored three own goals. So it scored an own goal is a, a goal that you score uh, in your own team's goal. So you score for the opposition. So the hapless defender, very unlucky, or maybe just a bad player. But <laughs> in this case, we're assuming he or she is unlucky. Okay, so think of your own examples. As I said, try to make a personal emotional connection. It's much easier to remember things with an emotional connection 
Maybe put them in the, the comments to this video because it's always nice to share. It's a good way to practice, but also you can help other people learn these adjectives. And thank you for joining me and I'll see you very soon for another video. Take care, bye.